the modern pride movement was started by queer and trans women of color. This is important because today in Edmonton, Alberta, as part of the Pride Festival, we had a protest led by queer and trans people of color. So this video is not to convince anyone of any particular viewpoint um, so much as it is to outline what kind of what happened, some of the background to it, and why and why I think it's important that we listen first and share our opinions later on this subject. So first off, I personally know a good number of the individuals who organized this stuff today. I was not involved in the organization at all. I was there today specifically to film one of the people who was involved because I'm doing a documentary on him, around him and his experiences. He's a trans man living in Edmonton. That said, I think we really, as a community, especially the white folks in this community, we really need to listen to them. So, first off, listening involves knowing what people are talking about. So first, a little bit of context. The individuals who organized the protest today have actually been working with the Pride Festival, approaching them for quite some time. Um, I'm not entirely sure of all of the details around their discussions, but I do know this. They approached the Pride Festival and they said, we want cops out. We don't want police presence in the Pride Parade. Okay? That was that was the main the main crux of, of a lot of these conversations. Now the Pride Festival, um, for whatever reason, decided not to heed their requests. For one reason or another, they needed to keep the cops in. We'll set that aside for now. I'll probably come back to it. So what, what was it that they wanted? Well, they wanted four things. And they were very clearly written out, very clearly explained to the Pride Festival today. Getting a text. Very important. One that the Pride Center uninvite the Edmonton Police Service, the RCMP, and the military from marching in future Pride parades. Two, that the Pride Society restructure its board and its hiring practices to have more representation of people of color and trans folks. Try that again. Two, that the Pride Society restructure its board and rework its and rework its hiring practices to represent more people of color and trans folks. Three, that more well-funded spaces specifically designed for people of color and trans folks be included in the festival in the future. Four, that all mainstream spaces in the festival clearly acknowledge the history of Pride as a demonstration against police oppression. That was it. That was what they were looking for. Now, personally, now this is opinion stuff, I think that those four things are pretty reasonable to ask for for an organization that's supposed to represent the whole queer community in Edmonton. I understand that a lot of the people who are involved in the Pride Festival don't necessarily understand how important these things might be to the people of color and the trans folks who are asking for these things. But here's the issue. When the folks that we've placed in power within the festival aren't acknowledging that these problems exist, even when they're brought evidence of the problem, then the issue becomes less uh, a matter of, oh, some members of our community are having a problem with the police, and it becomes more of an issue of some members of our community can't access community spaces. There's a reason why a lot of folks now are heading towards calling it the LGBTQ communities, because they don't feel safe in the broader LGBTQ community. So you go out to Pride, and what happens? Well, personally, I, I generally don't go to Pride events. I don't go to Pride events because I don't feel safe there. Because even as a trans woman who's been out and living as a trans woman for five years now, and I'm someone who's rarely, if ever, misgendered, rarely, if ever, taken for a man, 
at Pride, my chance of being misgendered skyrockets. Yeah, it's a funny thing. It's almost like everyone assumes that, oh no, if you are a man who looks like a woman at Pride, you're a drag queen. So that's my personal bias against going out to Pride. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that I don't think Pride is important or that it has a place. I think it is and it does. But I think that the space needs to be made for people who need that space. Because if we're going to make Pride a party, we need to remember why the party even exists. So let's talk about police marching in the Pride Parade and my opinions on it. Just as an aside, I'm not talking about police lining the streets. That's a safety aspect of it, that's a legal aspect of it, a liability aspect of it, and in our modern society we can't have a festival with thousands of people without some police presence. And, and while personally I think that that sucks, um, I understand the reasons for it. But now we have police marching in Pride as allies, okay? Now the problem is that they are only allies to certain portions of our community. They're still disproportionately targeting people of color and carding people of color in our city. They're throwing people in jail. Um, one of my dear friends was telling me today that the reason why she was not staying at the Pride Festival was because if she got drunk and she took the train home, if she bumped into a police officer, there was a significant chance that she would be thrown down to the ground and arrested, violently arrested. She shared some stories with me that I don't need to go into now of police brutality for very little reason. Um, unjustifiable police brutality. And this happens here in Edmonton. It happens down the street from me here on Alberta Avenue. It's a problem here. And it's a problem that targets members of the LGBTQ community who also happen to be people of color. Now, setting aside the people of color aspect, we're talking about trans people specifically when it comes to police. Whether, whether a person is white or a person of color, if you're trans, your chances of being targeted by the police are increased again. So being trans and a person of color, yeah, things would go up even more. But that's intersectional politics again. I don't, I don't need to rehash it so much. So my main point is that if we're going to be throwing this huge party that's supposedly for the whole community, then we need to make sure that the most vulnerable people in those communities, the people who are targeted most by the oppression that is pointed at our communities, are heard, and that they are not made unsafe by coming out to that party. Look at it like this. You've got a former abuser who you were maybe in a relationship with, and your parents invite that person out to your family dinner. People call Pride Gay Christmas. Okay? This is the Pride Festival, the people who hold the power in this situation, inviting out the abusive ex of a lot of people in this community, namely the police, to our Christmas dinner and saying, oh yeah, still come out to Christmas dinner. Well, guess what? I'm not going to come. I'm not going to go out to a Christmas dinner or a big celebration that's supposed to be about me if the people who abuse and oppress those closest to me are also invited. Let's look at another component of it. There are a lot of folks who say, well, there are LGBTQ police officers and military officers and RCMP members. Don't they deserve to be at Pride? If we say no police at Pride, then they don't feel welcome. Well, guess what? You, you don't have to come as a part of your employer. Okay? Saying that EPS should be able to have a float at Pride is the same as saying that the United Conservative Party of Alberta should have a float at Pride. It doesn't make a lot of sense when they're still actively targeting the rights of the people who Pride is supposed to be about. So, how do I think we should fix this? I think that the police, the Edmonton Police Services and the RCMP need to continue to reach out to the queer community. If they want to join us at the party, they've got to prove that they're allies first, okay? The way that TD does. So, so side note on corporate sponsorship of Pride. 
Personally, I think it sucks that we've got to have a whole bunch of money thrown at Pride by big corporations. But here's the thing. When TD shows up and they're running this huge float and they're running their signs and they've got tons of employees, some of them queer, some of them allies, and they're taking up a lot of space. They're also doing something important, which is donating a hell of a lot of money. They're keeping it going and they're helping the Pride Festival wade through a lot of bureaucracy. Whether or not that needs to be there, that's a totally different discussion. I think that anyone who marches as part of Pride who is not an organization that is specifically a member of that community or, or who works with the community, they need to prove their allyship first. And then they can be invited out. And I think that's what the Edmonton Police Services and the RCMP need to do. They need to reach out to the community, not just to the Pride Festival, because you can talk to a bunch of rich white folks who are running a festival and they're going to say, yeah, come on out. But what you need to do is you need to reach the people who are still being targeted, who are still being hurt unjustly in our community. You need to reach out to them and you need to ask them what you can do to be an ally, to be an accomplice, because that's what it takes. Because if you want to come to my party, you got to be able to join the riot first. So obviously I have a lot of feelings about this stuff, and I'm also pretty wound up from being in the middle of a protest where I had gay white guys screaming at my face this close to me, you know, um, telling me how, oh no, the battle's already won. So I'm gonna go edit this, uh, but in the meantime, if you disagree with me, that's totally fine. But I implore you to take your time, slow down, and be civil in the comments. Because if you come out swinging, you're just gonna hurt the relationships that need to be built between the white folks in our community and the people of color in our community. And those relationships have have been long since damaged already. We do not need further division there. This is a chance for Edmonton to, to step up. As white folks, we need to do better. And this is, this is our chance, Edmonton. If we're the progressive capital of Alberta, then we need to show it. One more thing before I go. I really wanna underscore the fact that I'm coming at this as a white settler woman who has had pretty minimal issues with the police. My issues are not personal with EPS. I don't think the EPS is terrible. What I do think is that we need to listen to the people who are saying that they're being marginalized and we need to give them the space to set their own standards for what allyship looks like. If pride is just strictly a celebration for the rights that have already been won, and it's not a challenge to expand our rights and protect the most vulnerable in our communities, then we might as well just cancel it. Because pride is a riot.